Hi, everybody. Welcome to Chatbox. I'm David Cruz. We begin today by noting that Twitter has been buzzing this week. Republican candidates in the midterms boycotting New Jersey's press for being unfair. So it's a pleasure to see two Republicans here, among the many who visit with us, by the way. Joining us are Senator John Bramnick and former gubernatorial and congressional candidate Phil Rizzo. Gentlemen, thank you very much for, for sitting with us today. Let me start here. Phil Rizzo, you tweeted at me when I said two Republicans would be on the show this week. I'm quoting you. It says, don't get too excited, David. I assure you it's only one Republican. I assume you weren't talking about yourself here. Are you saying John Bramnick is not a Republican? We're increasingly moving towards a one-party system here in New Jersey. There's very little difference between New Jersey Democrats and establishment Republicans. And so I appreciate the opportunity to talk about these differences. Uh, but as you replied, you know, that's the sort of pre-show uh, exposure we're trying to talk about. We want to bring people to this conversation. We want people to hear both sides uh, because this is certainly a big issue for the direction of our state and also for our country. All right. So is John Bramnick a Republican or not? I'll tell you, his votes and his positioning uh, does not align with tradition, traditional Republican values. No. John Bramnick, is Phil Rizzo a Republican? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't studied Phil Rizzo's record. But I can tell you this, that if we don't expand our party in New Jersey, uh, we're going to be perpetually in the minority. So a lot of us in the Republican Party, we don't agree on everything. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be in the same party. And let me say this, over 75 percent of the people in New Jersey are registered Democrats or independents. If, if there's a litmus test for Republicans and we continue to dwindle the size of our party, we'll continue to be in a minority. So my opinion is, look, if people believe in lower taxes, we have a strong stand on crime. Uh, we believe that first and second graders shouldn't be taught gender identity. There's a whole bunch of issues we agree on. But I understand what happens is people in our party who say, if they're not like me, they shouldn't be in a party. That's a major mistake, I believe. I want to get to some core beliefs in a second, but let's get to the 800-pound gorilla in the room with the state's Republican Party, and that's Donald Trump. He's really redefined Republicanism in the country and, and in the state, obviously. My question for you, Phil Rizzo, is are you a Trump Republican? I'll say this. I don't think Donald Trump redefined what it means to be a Republican. I believe he reestablished it. And I have no problem being identified as a Trump Republican, but everybody wants to assign Trump to it. It's traditional Republican values. It's making America great again. John Bramnick, I assume that uh, you're not a Trump Republican. We've had that conversation before. But John Bramnick is a, a, a what Republican, a blank Republican? Fill in the blank with a name. No, the history of the Republican Party. Uh, we had George W. Bush, his dad. We had Ronald Reagan. Uh, we've had multiple presidents. So I don't think we should be labeled as one individual's decision-making uh, position, such as Donald Trump. We have a Big Ten party. And, and I can tell you this. There are many independents and Democrats who would vote for Republicans if they felt they trusted the Republican Party. When you see January 6, you see election deniers. That hurts our credibility as Republicans. And if we continue down a road where we disrespect the FBI, we disrespect court decision on whether or not Joe Biden is the president, we will lose ground in New Jersey. As Republicans, we also have to respect the courts and the law. And if we don't do that, we'll never win the trust of those independent voters. They don't really like Phil Murphy and they don't really like Joe Biden, but they don't know if they can trust us. And Mr. Rizzo says, well, there's only one kind of Republican. That really doesn't build trust in the voters who aren't registered Republicans. So Phil Rizzo, he touched on a couple things there. Um, 2020. Uh, particularly in January 6th. Let me give you the let me ask you the first part of that. Are are you satisfied that the 2020 election is settled business and that 
Joe Biden is president legitimately of the United States? I'm not an attorney. I'm not a judge. I've not viewed all of the evidence, and I'm not going to litigate it on uh, on a, a, a short conversation here about the direction of our party. But where I don't live, I don't live in a place where I'm not allowed to believe what I see. And what I saw time and time again through the 2020 election were ballot stuffers with these drop boxes. And I'm not going to uh, be told I'm not allowed to speak my mind. That's or actually what I'm trying to do uh, is get you to speak your mind. It's really kind of a yes or no. So are, are you in a grayish area where you're saying you don't know if 2020 was a legitimately run election? Can we say I don't that believe 2020 was a, was a, uh, a legitimately run election. Universal mail-ins? I mean, that's just not America. All right, uh, all we right. go to polls on one day and we vote. We did not do that in 2020. All right. And and so John Bramlink brought up January 6th. What was January 6th in your mind? What did you see that day? I wasn't there. Um, I, I was did not attend. Uh, I had some plans with some pastor friends of mine to go. Uh, I didn't go. But you must have seen some of the coverage on television. Absolutely. And I've seen multiple shots of rioters beating on the doors of the Capitol. I have seen that. And I've also seen Capitol Hill police open doors from the inside and let people peacefully walk in. To paint January 6th as a, with a broad brush and make it a topic of discussion is disingenuous. And so, like I said, I voice my opinion. I'm not told what to think. I don't get put into a box to have opinions on a hard line one way or another. I look, I examine, and I speak. John Bramnick, did you see uh, shades of nuance that, that Phil Rizzo was talking about when it comes to January 6th? None. Uh, police officers who are attacked, in my judgment, we should be on the side of law enforcement and police officers. And to break down the walls or the doors of the Capitol is not the Republican Party. I want to be part of. I agree with that. I agree with that. And, and there's four sides to the building. And no doubt those things that John spoke of were happening. But there was a lot of other things that were happening there which tell a more complete story. All right. I want to get to this whole question of of the Jersey midterms uh, and two Republicans, particularly Tom Kane and Paul DeGroote, their uh, candidates for Congress. They say they're boycotting New Jersey press because we're biased. A, is the New Jersey press biased against Republicans? And B, shouldn't a candidate for Congress talk to, at the minimum, the state's largest newspaper and, and its statewide public television station? Let's start with you, John Bramnick. Well, I can tell you that I do believe that generally the media is harder on Republicans. And I've been in this business for a while. Uh, and the questions I get tend to be tougher. And I don't think there's much doubt that most of the members of the media are, n are not card-carrying Republicans. So there is a built-in bias. But I'm willing to stand up, answer those questions, and hope that the public makes the decision. But no, I think, the, I think there's no question the media slants to the left. Phil Rizzo, enough of a bias to boycott New Jersey media? I shy away from no debate. You mentioned Tom Keene not talking to the press. Tom Keene wouldn't even talk to me. <laughs> I was a uh, candidate in that primary. We asked for a debate approximately a dozen times. He wouldn't talk to me, so I certainly don't expect him to talk to the press. But yeah, absolutely, there's a, there's a bias in New Jersey uh, towards uh, the left, no doubt. Uh, we had put out press releases uh, during our campaign. We had members of the press rewrite our press releases. So no doubt, but still, even with that, I'll talk to anybody, anywhere, about any topic. Is it your opinion that when you send a press release to the press that they should run it without any editing or any fact-checking? Absolutely. They can comment on the press release, but the press release should be put out from a campaign. It's in entirety. If they want to make comments shredding it and refuting it, that's their business. It's their paper. But they shouldn't rewrite my press release. Well, it's a little bit of a difference, but then we'll be really getting into the weeds. Let me move on. 
Um, I'll stay with you, Phil Rizzo. Your party has one black lawmaker in the legislature. I don't know how many Latinos exactly, but it's not a lot. Why the dearth? And do you think that's a problem? Absolutely. As I mentioned before, I, I'm a right wing conservative, but my two campaigns, I ran as a populist. I spent almost a decade pastoring in deep blue Hudson County. We started two churches. Our <laughs> our churches looked like the United Nations. We had every race uh, imaginable in our church. And yeah, I think that that is a problem uh, within the Republican Party. Uh, nationally, I believe it's expanding, uh, but not so much here in New Jersey. I think we have to do a much better job of that. John Bramnick, he says he's got uh, a multicultural base, uh, but you're, he hasn't won an election yet. You've won several elections. Your party still does have one, one legislator in the party who is black. That's abysmal, is it not? Well, that is unfortunate. And if we don't expand our party and have a bigger tent and not exclude people, uh, we're going to continue down to a path of being a smaller and minority. Let me interrupt you, to... because you, you are suggesting uh, by um, in, you're suggesting right now that hinting that that the person who's excluding others is the guy you're talking to now, Phil Rizzo. Well, I, I think if you're harsh, you're angry and you say these people are 100 percent wrong and I'm 100 percent right and that guy shouldn't be a Republican. I want to tell you, people who listen to these things want to see empathy, want to see understanding. And if we don't do that as a party, we are going to shrink. It, there are a lot of different views There's views in my family. I don't exclude my daughter or my son or my wife because we disagree. And, and they're all part of my family. And if we don't show that kind of empathy to people in the state of New Jersey, we will end without f further inclusion and a smaller tent. And I'm very worried about that. They have to feel that we are open minded. We try to understand we're not hateful and that we're, we, we, we take all comers. Phil Rizzo, you have tweeted some really provocative things uh, about the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, as well as uh, trans people across um, the state that some at the very least have suggested are intolerant. And as you know, you've been called a racist and, and worst. Uh, how do you then try and say that you want to recruit people to the party and that you want to expand the party's base when some of your very rhetoric is, is really anti-black and anti-gay? It's not anti-black and it's not anti-gay. It's anti-Marxism. It's anti-evil. BLM, when they showed up on the scene, everybody thought it was black about black people. It had nothing to do with black people. It had to do with a Marxist agenda. And, and I will call it out. You know, uh, John said we don't teach our children uh, uh, to fight. We teach them how to compromise. That's opposite. I think we ought to fight Marxism. I think we ought to fight evil. We don't we don't. We don't not compromise on taxes and paving roads and 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 uh, decent dialogue, but we do fight against those that try to crush our small businesses, those that uh, kill our elderly, uh, those that try to pervert and pollute our children's minds, uh, those that want to call parents uh, uh, the problem and not the radical left. Yeah, we we believe that we ought to fight those things and not be afraid to speak our minds. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be called names no matter what, but I also have enough courage and strength to be able to say, give it enough time, the evidence will come out. BLM was designed to dissolve and destroy the nuclear family. All right, we let me ask John, John Bramnick if he agrees with that. Well, there's two ways to speak your mind. You can do it in a statesmanlike way. You can try to recruit more people to the party, try to convince people of your ideas. Just being mad is not a strategy. Just being angry. Fighting, though, is not necessarily just being angry. It's trying to develop a strategy where we win. Let me ask you, Phil Rizzo, what the differences are between your view of abortion and what you understand John Bramnick's view of abortion to be. As a Bible believer, as somebody that adheres to 
uh, uh, Christianity as viewed for the last 2,000 years, uh, human life begins in the womb. I believe that. I am pro-life from conception. That's, that's what my restrictions position. would you place on abortion? Uh, I, I don't believe uh, abortion is an option, except in one case uh, when the mother's life uh, is in jeopardy. And honestly, I know uh, some people within the evangelical community that happen to disagree with me on that. Um, but my position is pro-life from conception uh, with uh, restricting, stopping the beating of a human heart. Uh, and unless mom's beating heart uh, is a real serious truth, uh, then I believe uh, abortion is wrong. John Bramnick, how, how much do you choice. agree and or disagree with that? I disagree with almost all of it, uh, except the part where he said to save the mother's life. Uh, that, that's about the only agreement. A late term abortion, I think, is a serious problem. Some of the bills that the Democrats have posted, I, I disagree with. But this is a personal choice for women and clearly rape rape and incest surely should be an exception and i've been a pro-choice republican within reasonable standards because i believe it's the woman's decision and not necessarily government's decision i've always been like that and i disagreed with the overturning of roe versus wade all right i want to go quickly to the sex ed curriculum um, suggestions um, that have really become a big issue in these midterms. Um, Phil Rizzo, you said that the sex ed suggestions that you had seen, you called it uh, curriculum, but it's not officially curriculum, but you said that it was grooming our kids for future perverse purposes. Do you really believe that? Absolutely, I believe that. The standards that are given, and we had a 12-hour event, a live event, where we had many members of the New Jersey legislature join us to express their concerns. Uh, one in particular where uh, 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 Senator Joe Panaccio put in a, um, an amendment to say a six-year-old is should not be taught specific sex acts. It was voted down on party lines. I mean, that's disgusting. I'm not afraid to say it. And I absolutely believe that an agenda to teach a six-year-old specific sex acts is grooming for future perversion. Absolutely. John Bremnick, this is something that has uh, come through the legislature and has been uh, hotly debated. Do you agree with Phil Rizzo that the sex ed curriculum is grooming our kids for future perverse purposes? No, I don't think there's any intent there, but I think it's bad public policy to teach gender identity in the first and second grade. Uh, we had sex education growing up in a junior high school or in high school, but clearly uh, these kind of issues clearly are for parents. And this is not even a Democrat Republican issue. This is an issue. It's way too early to be teaching some of the, as I said, gender identity in first grade, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. And I hear that from parents across the board. It's That's a serious mistake. But is there some intent on behalf of government? I hear these conspiracy stories all the time. You know, government has this overall plan. Look, I don't even think government can get organized enough to have a plan like that, to be honest with you. It's, there's not like this one organization in government that, like, gets together and has a conspiracy. I just think it's people who find conspiracies, but it's just bad public policy. All right, that last question. I appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. What bothers you most about the other guy's views? Let me start with you, Phil Rizzo. Well, like I said, we're becoming a uniparty, uh, and the attack is, is on people that stand for conservative uh, values, traditional American values. You know, there's plenty of quotes flying around out there with all these various speeches. We know that there's quotes coming out from Biden's speech with that eerie black and red uh, uh, background. Uh, there's a quote that I read, uh, I, I deeply believe our democracy is under attack from within. Now, that wasn't from the Joe Biden speech with that eerie red and black background. 
That was from John. And that was from John when he was standing next to Governor Murphy uh, supporting this curriculum and talking about how we can't fight these things. We need to compromise. Uh, and so my position and my problem is, again, as I mentioned, we are moving to the middle to this independent voter. Uh, that voting base is not there. If it was true, uh, Jack Cittarelli would be the governor right now. He's not, because that vote base is not there. Those independent voters are, are disenfranchised conservatives that want no part of the NJ GOP, or they're apathetic to politics. And, and that's who's sitting in there. And so I believe that we ought to secure our base and once we secure our base, then we try to build and add more people to our bucket. John and I agree that we need to expand our, our party's tent, but you don't expand a tent by moving the tent. You secure your base and then make the tent bigger. I think the NJGOP is going about it the wrong way. They're like the Christmas tree in, in the corner on December 25th. We look at it, it houses our presence, but that Christmas tree is dead. It died back in November when it was cut down, even though it looks pretty. That's the NJ GOP. They're standing there, but they are dead on arrival. That's why John's hitching his wagon to Phil Murphy to go national in 2024, because he knows the New Jersey Republican Party is dead on arrival. All right. John Bramnick, uh, are well, you, you hitching your well, <laughs> well, first to Phil Murphy? Uh, the, the, when the, the governor and I work together to do some funding for a school and for schools in my district. And that's one of the things I advocate for. But let me tell you something. Just because a governor's of another party or a president's of another party, we still have to deal with them and not simply attack them. Yeah, that I, doesn't work. I, I wanted you, to you, give you an opportunity to answer sure. what my question was, which is, sure. what is it about Phil Rizzo's brand of Republicanism that bothers you? Because he spends most of his time trying to get people to understand him as opposed to trying to understand the people of New Jersey and the people who are voters in the state. It's pretty much all about him and his views. It's never open minded. And if you're going to represent people, you represent a lot of different people with a lot of different views. It's just not about me. It's about public policy and listening. And I think sometimes there's people in our party, and I accept him as a Republican. I just think he doesn't accept other people and therefore doesn't really want to understand. He just wants to be understood. All right. Yes or no to this final question. Uh, I'll ask you first, John Bramnick, is Phil Rizzo a danger to New Jersey Republicanism? No, I don't think he's a danger. I think we'd be much better off if he worked in a way where people gain trust for our party as opposed to fear of our party. All right. Sometimes when you hear harsh language from somebody like Rizzo, people go, you know, I don't like Phil Murphy, but I don't know if I can vote for a Republican. I think that's that's the problem that sometimes if people have strong opinions like that, th that's what happens to the, vo the voters hear that. Phil Rizzo, you get the last word here. Is John Bramnick a danger to Republicanism in New Jersey? No, I don't think he's a danger. I think he's misinformed, and I think he mischaracterized who I am. Uh, I'm a pastor. My life is dedicated to listening to people and then helping them along in life. I showed up on the scene in politics two years ago. I ran for governor for four and a half years months. And we pulled 27% of the vote. John Bramnick can try and label me as somebody who's doing a lot of talking and trying to sell myself. People want somebody that does listen and speaks for them. He's not listening. We represent, my voice represents the anger and the frustration from New Jersey families, top to bottom, from both sides of the party. We had Democrats switching registrations to Republican to vote for me. How did I pull 27% in four and a half months? That's insane. It's not because I'm great. It's because I listened and I actually echoed the voice of the New Jersey families top to bottom. All I right. think it's John who's tone deaf. And I think 30 years being in the Republican minority in New Jersey, I, there's enough evidence there to say that they're the dying breed and we're up and coming. All right. Phil Rizzo, John Bramnick, thanks for coming on with us today. Thank, Thank you, David. Bye-bye, everybody.
That's Chat Box for this week. You can follow me on Twitter at David Cruz and Jay and subscribe to the YouTube channel for new content every day. You can also find us on myNJPBS.org. I'm David Cruz. From all the crew over here, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Major funding for Chatbox with David Cruz is provided by the members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of New Jersey residents and businesses for more than 100 years. Promotional support is provided by Insider NJ, a political intelligence network dedicated to New Jersey political news. Insider NJ is committed to giving serious political players an interactive forum for ideas, discussion, and insight. Online at insidernj.com.